everyone and welcome back. I'm so happy to have you again in my kitchen and I want to take this opportunity to thank everybody for your subscriptions. I've taken note of them. I sincerely appreciate it and I'm so happy to be here sharing another recipe. Today, join me for corn soup. Okay, so I don't want anyone to panic because of the sheer number of ingredients that I have here. The most difficult part is just getting it set up and ready to go. In this bowl here, I have one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. To that, I'm going to add a couple shakes of onion powder, a couple shakes of garlic powder, a small amount of salt, maybe a teaspoon, and about a teaspoon of sugar. We're gonna use this to make dumplings, okay? Here, I have one cup of coconut milk. Here, I have a half a cup of uh, salted pork that I just cut into tiny little pieces. I'm using this mostly for flavor. Here, what I have is, uh, let me see, two, four, six, two, four, six, eight cloves of garlic about 10 sprigs of cilantro, a nice fat sprig of thyme, about two tablespoons of Caribbean golden ray butter. If you don't have golden ray, no problem, just use regular butter. If you're cutting down on fat, don't use any at all. Uh, one small onion, and I have about five uh, leaves of podina or Spanish thyme or Cuban oregano. What I'm gonna do with this is blend it up to make what we call green seasoning. In this bowl here, I have one uh, can of creamed corn. In this bowl here, I have a large can of um, pumpkin, just pure pumpkin. Make sure you don't pick up the one that's for apple pie because that one, is it has sugar and you're gonna end up with dessert soup. Here, I have, let me see, one, two, three, four, about five green bananas that I peeled, or green fig, like we say back home, I peel them uh, and put them in water so they don't get oxidized and turn black. I cut those kind of big because they have the tendency to become dis to disintegrate very quickly. Here, I have three potatoes that I cut into decent sized chunks and on this tray here I have some celery I have about four ears of corn that I cut into like little discs and I have here two carrots that I cut into like kind of chunks to give it some dimension and some nice color okay back here I have two tablespoons of coconut oil. I'm gonna add in adobo and Maggi to taste. In here, I have some black pepper, and that is it. Let me get my green seasoning together, and then I'll come on back and we'll start cooking. All right, so I have my pot here. It's nice and hot. Um, I'm gonna go in with my coconut oil. to melt down. I'm also going to go in with my salted pork. You can um, you can surely make this dish uh, vegetarian if you like and instead of putting you can just omit the pork. Omit the meat all together and instead of my favorite Maggi cube you can just use vegetable bouillon. Okay? my green seasoning that I blended up. I'm gonna leave back a little bit for later on in the cooking process. And while I was blending this up, I decided to add a couple of these little sweet peppers. That's why you're seeing um, red specks in there. So let me saute this for a while and we'll start going in with our vegetables. 
So I almost forgot a very important ingredient. Oh my gosh. One cup of yellow split peas that I soaked and boiled until it disintegrated. I used my uh, immersion blender to assist in the process. So now it's just like soup. It looks white and frothy because of the immersion blender. Okay. sauteed my seasonings and my salted pork in there for about uh, maybe seven or eight minutes I wasn't really paying attention to the time but by my estimation was about that so now I'm gonna go in with the um, pumpkin all right my pumpkin is in now I'm going in with my cream corn and then uh, I will start adding my hot water so we can start building our stock. Okay, going in with my hot water. I always like to hot, add hot water. I say that all the time because my dish will take very little time to come up to a boil. Okay, let me give this a mix. And I, you know, I'm not using any exact, exact science as far as the water goes. I'm just pouring until I find I like the consistency. Right now, I think this is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go in with my spring of thyme and then we're gonna start. Um... Okay, so far, so there's no salt at all in here. So I'm not gonna use salt, I'm gonna use Maggie because it'll give me the flavor of like bouillon with salt. So usually that's what I do. Oh, I'm gonna say that's about four, five tablespoons. Let me just sprinkle in about a tablespoon and a half of this adobo. I'm going heavy on my salt because we have a bunch of vegetables and stuff that are gonna go in here and they're gonna suck up most of the salt so I'm gonna let this uh, boil so the all of the flavors could marry with each other I'd say I give it about 10-15 minutes and then I'm gonna start adding in my veggies All right, I'm gonna go with some black pepper. It's only been about six or seven minutes. I'm putting in two tablespoons. Actually, no, not two tablespoons. I would say about a tablespoon and a half. You know, I always put habanero in everything, but I'm not doing that today because <laughs> I'm gifting this and the people probably can't handle hot peppers. So I'm kicking it up with black pepper. Okay. Uh, I was gonna say something. While this is going, I think what I'm gonna do is do my dumplings. So let me get some water and I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, so I added about a half a teaspoon of uh, salt, half a teaspoon of sugar, half teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder. I'm gonna mix this around and go in with some water. You don't wanna throw all of your water in at one time because you might end up with soup. And that would, <laughs> that's why they have a saying back home, water more than flour. That means, oh man, it's a disaster. Nothing you can do to save that. Okay, so um, every single time I need flour for dumplings, I think about my dad. Oh my gosh. He used to like to need, 
used to like to knead the flour for the dumplings and my dad would knead that and knead it hard knead 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 when you get that dumpling on your plate i'm telling you don't even try to use your spoon to cut it it will slide off <laughs> i always remember that when i'm making dumplings need a little teensy bit again all right let me um you see let me just keep kneading so i can get this into a nice dough a nice ball so i have a pretty stiff dough ball here i'm gonna set this aside for when we're ready to use it but um if my mother see this bowl it's pot spoon and licks and my tail she said when you need flour the bowl must be clean well ma i'm my own house now <laughs> I can do what I want. <laughs> anyway, so let me let this rest and we'll take a look at what's going on here. I'm going to cover that with some saran wrap or a wet um, kitchen towel. Let's see. I think um, this looks pretty good. I'm going to start going in with veggies. Okay. Let's get our corn in there. Please do not drop things and run. Just what I what I usually do when I have a big pot of soup, I pile up everything in one area because there's gonna be other things here to break the fall and save you from getting splashed. So I just pile up everything right here, even though some of them may move away, but still, you have less of a chance of getting burnt. And I'm going with the carrots. And now that I'm gonna leave the green banana and the aloo for a little bit longer, the potato. Alright. I'm gonna let this go for about 10 minutes before I add in my potato oh we have to add our coconut milk all right oh my gosh this smelling like tobago <laughs> all right let me let this go for about 10 minutes and then um we'll come back and start adding in adding the dumpling aloo and last the bananas all right, it's been about 10 minutes. I'm going in with my golden ray. And off camera, I tasted this and I added about a half a tablespoon more of Maggi because we needed the salt. And I added one tablespoon of this uh, white vinegar just to balance the flavors out because we're using carrots we're using all this uh, corn and we're using cream corn. All of these things have a pretty sweet undertone. So I'm trying to balance off the flavors. Next, I'm gonna start making my dumpling, putting them in, then the potatoes, and lastly, the, um, the bananas. So this is how I do it. I broke off a, just a ball of dough and just swizzle it around like that. Make it into a snake. And then I just cut off little pieces on a bias like that. See? They come out kind of like fat little kurmas. <laughs> All right, I'm going to finish putting these in here. I'll come back and add the potato. All right, my dumpling is in. I'm going in with the aloo now, potato. I'm gonna let that go for about five or six minutes. Then I'll add in the um, bananas. All right, going in with my bananas. We 
give this a stir. Man, it smells so delicious. <coughs> All right, my dumplings are already starting to float. That's a good indication that they're pretty much cooked. I'm gonna let this go now. I would say for another 10 minutes and we should be ready to go, okay? Would you look at this? Man, this smells really good. Look at the banana. Still holding its structural integrity, but bam. Just breaking easily when you touch it with a spoon or a spatula. Let me play it up and I will taste it. Look at that. Let me come closer. Look at this. Okay, here we go. I turn out I'm a little deer. <laughs> no, that's not a deer. That's my measuring cup. <laughs> Can I look like a deer? All right, let me go for the sauce. Jose Maria y Jesus. Oh man, this is good. Wow. Guys, I know it was a lot of ingredients, but believe me when I tell you it is worth every bit of your effort. Come on, give this thing a shot. You're going to love it. Come back next time when I'll be doing another delicious recipe. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.